Okay, we will solve the following exercise. The exercise is in number 2.38. The length of the bar AB is 0.6 meters. Determine the components of a unit vector E, AB, that points from point A toward point B. Right? Basically, what we have right here is uh, half of a circle. Right here, there is the middle of the circle. The radius is going to be equal to 0.4 meters. And the, posi the position with respect of um, the zero regarding the, the point A is 0.3 meters. And we have B on the perimeter along the, the, the bar AB. All right, that is pretty much it. I want to do another graphical rep representation for us to start working on it. All right, so right here we have the circle. Right here I'm going to draw the middle of it. So we have X and Y. So um, for example, right here we have the point A, which is 0.3 meters, but um, yes, uh, at the end we, we have to, to place the, the units, but during the exercise is not necessary. So, and for example, right here we have the point B. Right here we have the uh, the radius 0.4 meters all right now the exercise is asking for the unit vector of the vector rab i don't like to use this nomenclature guys i'm going to rewrite this show it better i'm going to rewrite this as rab with a little hat above it all right something like this R A B because that is the nomenclature that I'm used to. Now we will start working on it by determining first the what, what are the ways possible for us to determine a unit vector. The first one is by using the angle regarding the the vector and the x-axis. And we just have to use cosine and sine for, for us to, to determine that. Uh, in this case, we don't have any, actually, no angle. So we will have to work with the equation of the unit vector. Now, the unit vector R A B is going to be equal to the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. That is pretty much it. Remember that, guys. When we're working with vectors, all we care about is the magnitude and the direction. For when we work with a unit vector, it is called actually a unit vector because uh, the magnitude of the vector is always one. So we are only playing with the direction. Okay, that way we can transform one vector into another. Uh, there are some different rules. For example, if I have this vector and a vector parallel to it, they are going to share the same unit vector. Uh, it basically has to describe the same direction. Right? Now, uh, that is something apart, but it is important for me to mention it. Now, we have the magnitude. Why is that? Because something that I didn't write right here is that the vector RAB has a magnitude. All right? That magnitude is the value that the exercise is giving us right here, the length of the bar, 0.6. So this is equal to 0.6 meters. So we have the magnitude, we don't have this, and we actually need this for us to locate the unit vector. Now, how we can how can we possibly determine um, a vector, a normal vector, by using its coordinates? So remember, we have to take into consideration which is the final point because those uh, those coordinates 
is the one that will be uh, subtracted from the original point. Let me make myself understand a little bit better. We have right here that the components of point A are 0, 0.3, right? Why is that? Because 0 0.3 regarding the x direction, 0 0.3, and 0 regarding the y direction. It is along the same axis, so it is equal to 0. Now, regarding the other, uh, we don't have that information. We are looking for it. Basically, what we are going to look for is bx, by. All right. Why is that? Because the unit vector finally, uh, I'm sorry, the vector is going to be equal to bx minus 0.3 plus by minus 0. Once again, bx minus 0.3 and by minus 0. First component, second component regarding by. Now, uh, as you can see right here, we don't have any information for us to determine bx and by directly. We have to work with some different triangles. The first triangle that we are working with is this big one. All right, so I'm going to describe right here a line. And this dimension, I'm going to call it y. Right? this whole dimension and finally we need uh, this other dimension which I'm going to call it X why is that because one catheter is going to be this one 0.3 plus X and the other is going to be simple Y all right now there is another triangle that is generated right here. I'm going to do it once again in green. And it's this one. All right. Remember, right here we have the radius, but we have that dimension right along all the perimeter of the circle. So I can delete this for us to not be confused. And I can say that this line is going to be equal to 0.4 meters in this case, all right? Which is equal to the radius. I think that we have everything we need graphically speaking, so we can begin with it, with the calculus. Now, regarding the first triangle that I mentioned, this one. Using Pythagoras, I can say that 0.6 square is going to be equal to 0.3 plus x square plus y square. Right? If you didn't understand the equation that I just did, please pause the video and you will understand it. Just taking into consideration this triangle. Basically, the hypotenuse square is going to be equal to the two uh, catheters, each one square, added together. So this is the equation that I have right here. Now, uh, why do we need another equation? Because we have one and two unknowns. For us to solve this exercise, we have the same amount of equations, right? If I have two, equa two unknowns, I need two equations for me to solve it. The second equation is going to be generated regarding the second triangle that I mentioned before. This one. It is going to be equal to 0.4 square is going to be equal to x square plus y square. All right? The same thing. Now, I'm going to call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Right? Now, from equation 2 from equation 2 I can solve either x or y the equation I can solve the equation for x or for y I don't really care about it because I don't have any of those I think it's easier 
um, well, let's do it randomly. So I'm going to solve it, for example, for, for, for x. So x is going to be equal to 0.4 square minus y square. And remember that I have to use the square root for me to solve the equation correctly. I'm going to call this equation 3. All right. Now, continuing, I have to use the equation that I just solved um, within one equation that I've not used yet, which is this one. All right, so um, three equation three into into one equation one. So zero point six square is going to be equal to zero point three plus open parentheses the square root of zero point four square minus y square. Close again and square plus y square. All right. Now I know that this could be pretty frustrating for you to see the first time, and when you start working on these kind of exercises, you will realize that you will develop, uh, I don't know, like a fifth sense, I don't know, whatever, a sixth sense, um, for you to know that maybe solving this, this unknown, it's, it's better because it is going to be placed right here and you're going to be, you're going to have more expertise regarding those types of, of, of variables because, yes, I think that I choose randomly uh, the the larger path for me to follow for me to solve this exercise but do not worry you just have to solve one or two or three and solve a lot of different exercises and you will develop that that sixth sense now since let's suppose that I do not have that I'm going to use the calculator because the calculator is going to help me to solve this this big equation. I don't really care about, I don't know, the first one is square plus two times the first one times the second one, which is this whole thing. I'm writing and writing and writing and writing. Finally, I'm going. Eventually, I'm going to get the answer. But we don't have that amount of time to do a test or something like that. So that is why we have the calculator. Basically, I just have to write down the equation, so 0 0.6 square is going to be equal to, open parentheses, 0 0.3 plus, open parentheses, the square root of 0 0.4 square minus the calculators. This kind of calculators doesn't like me to use y or something different from x, so I'm going to make a replacement of the unknown. I'm going to call it x, although I know it's y. So square, close parentheses, close it once again, square plus, uh, once again, x square. Shift, solve. Yes, I want to solve it for x. As you realize right here, it is showing a number. So that number, uh, well, what the calculator does is that it iterates. It does an iterative process. It is going to use the number of the last solve that he has that that the calculator has done before. So basically, it is going to iterate starting with the number that is placed right here for example that 0.3555 that you saw before for example once again shift solve this number the number that appears right here is the first try of the of the iteration method right so the calculator is going to start the solution using that number 
and it is going to uh, try with the ones that follows until it finds the solution until the equals is validated if it's validated it, the calculator is going to show uh, the result for the unknown all right uh, now I have solved this equation before that is why you can see this number right here but usually the number that you see right here is the one that uh, you have to use before so it the calculator saves some different information and this is basically the number but I can change it for example I wanted to start uh, the iteration process with a 9 so 9 equal it's going to show me the same value this is pretty functional when I know that the calculator is going to take a lot of time processing the iterative process and I know that the result would be for example close to 100 so I write down close uh, 100 and I click on enter and the calculator is going to start from that number so the time the amount of time is going to be reduced for this simple equation it is it doesn't matter the number that I place it is going to be pretty fast right so right here we have the answer for the unknown y is equal to 0 0.3555 I always use for significant inches after the point meters right now in blue I'm going to replace this result into equation t in equation 3 sorry so from equation 3 x is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.4 square minus y which is 0 0.3555 square right if I want to save the value that I we just that we just solved in the calculator I just have to press on shift storage and a All right as you can see the value has been saved into the a spot so for when I look for A, it is going to show the result that I just saved. Now, uh, I'm going to solve the equation for X. So the square root of 0.4 squared minus A, because I just saved the value. Square is equal to 0 0.18. Periodic, periodic tree sorry and that is pretty much it guys we just have to start working with the vectors information because we have solved the the equations for this value and this other which one was the ones that we care about now as you can see vx is going to be the x value 0 0.183 sorry 18 periodic tree and by is going to be equal to y the coordinate 0 0.3555 all right now Determine the vector R A B. This is going to be equal to O point eighteen three because is it is the final point minus the initial minus O point three. This is along the I direction recording the x axis plus by which is 0 0.3555 minus 0 along the I'm sorry the j axis recording the y axis and that is 
pretty much it guys we just have to solve this equation so our AB is going to be equal to this minus minus 0 0.3 so minus 0 0.116 periodic strix 6 but there is something that you should have no, that I didn't mention you have to be aware that this is negative this 0 0.3 is negative as I mentioned before at the start, at the start of the video, uh, this 0 0.3 is on the other side of the y-axis. That means that it is going to be negative. Right? Now, using the coordinates correctly, this is going to be equal to 0 .0, 0 0.183 minus minus 0.3 that is equal to uh, an addition so this is going to be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.183 so 0 0.483 periodic 3 and uh, this is along the i axis i direction plus 0 0.3555 on the j direction it is important for you to analyze the, the symbols because as you can see this vector is the resultant vector of two components this first one and this other regarding the first one I can know that it is going to be positive because it is pointing towards the same direction of, uh, of the axis. The same thing happens with the y-axis, right? So if I have right here something like negative number, I know that there is something wrong somewhere and you have to find it. In this case, what I was not taking into consideration was this negative symbol because of course when you're looking for a coordinate you have to make sure that the, the symbols are correct if it's positive or negative now we have the vector RAB what do we do next remember that we were doing all these because we needed uh, this all right so the vector RAB, the unit vector RAB is going to be 0.483 divided by 0.6, the magnitude, plus 0.3555 divided by 0.6, the magnitude once again. Remember that when you are dividing a vector by a number, which is in this case is the magnitude, that means a scalar. Uh, you have to make sure that you're at the end you're, the result is going to be a vector right why is that because you have to divide every single one of the components by the um, by the magnitude right as I did right here so basically this is going to be 0.4833 Let's use one tree divided by zero point six. The unit vector RAB is equal to zero point eight zero fifty five for the first component. Regarding the second one, zero point thirty five 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 plus 0 0.5925 the J direction this is in meters and right here guys we have the final answer for the exercise 
One way for you to know that this is the correct answer is by using the equation for you to determine the magnitude of a vector. Remember, we just solved the exercise for a unit vector. So, basically, the magnitude has to be 1. If it's not, you did an error somewhere. All right? And you have to start over step by step checking what in which place is the error. Now we will check it. The square root of 0 0.8055. Of course, it is not going to be exactly 1, but it has to be uh, near it but very near, for example, 0 0.999 or 1.001. .001. For example, if you have 1.1, it's not enough. If there is an error somewhere, that is not 1. It has to be 1.001 1 .001 or something like that. Plus um, 0 0.001 25 square right right here we have that is pretty close actually because we have to use four significant digits as you can see we have for the first four uh turn into a nine right this is pretty much it guys i know that this is a pretty large video but i think that it is important for you to understand some different basics and it is important for me to to remember those uh please make sure that of the symbol please be aware of the symbols please be aware of the coordinates please be aware of the replacement that you do for example right here in the equations I know that you can be confused something regarding this this plus or this negative actually because you don't know if negative is going to be included with the for example in this case but it is not all right you have to leave it outside of the parentheses um that is pretty much it guys this is how you can solve this exercise